Next up, a story from yeah. reporter Mark Phillips. All right. As you can see here, there's all these containers of tape loops. Okay, so set this up. Who is this guy? His name's William Bazinski. He's a musician who makes this really hard to describe music. He's been doing it for about 30 years, and basically what he does is he takes a little bit of classical music or Muzak, records it onto tape. This was sitting here. I analog this, tape. This might be terrible. And he loops it. Let's see if I can find something from. He cuts the beginning, the end, tapes it together into a circle, threads it through a tape machine, messes with the speeds, and you get something that sounds like this. This little phrase that just repeats over and over and over again. It never changes. You know, loops are everywhere. They're cycles. They're in nature. They're just universal. And if you can find a loop that can repeat without becoming redundant, then you can sort of fall into a different space and time even. Sort of like a bubble of eternity or something. I don't know. So that's what that sounds like. Well, in the summer of 2001, I was uh, archiving all these old tape loops, transferring them to digital. And something kind of weird happened. He grabbed this one piece of tape, put it on. And it was this wonderful, grave, very stately loop I'd totally forgotten about. And I set it up and turned on the CD burner and left the control room, went to the kitchen, got some coffee and came back and I started realizing something was changing. I, I looked and I could see that the tape was shredding. The thing to understand about tape is that when you record music onto analog tape, onto a bit of it, that music... What it is, is it's iron oxide powder glued to just a piece of plastic. So the iron powder is actually the music. Yeah. But after 20, 30 years... The glue loses its strength. And the dust falls off. Onto the floor. His music was actually falling on the floor? Yeah. And I thought, oh my God, what's going to happen? And what happened was, in the course of about an hour, the music disintegrated. And you put more loops on, and it kept happening. But the really interesting thing was, while some disintegrated quickly, some slowly, they all sort of had the same pattern. What do you mean? Just listen to this one. So this is one of his loops at the beginning. Okay. And after it went around and around for 20 minutes or so, it, the dust started to fall off, and then it sounded like this. All the, all the notes are still there, but the tails they're getting shorter. Yeah. And that's what would always happen. The sustains and the decays of the notes seem to fall away, like from the back, moving backwards. Backwards. It gets shorter and shorter. Instead of being held for four seconds, it's held for three seconds. Two seconds. And finally, you just really hear... Like the attacks and the accents. Just the beginnings of the notes. Only the beginning. Those seem to hold on. At, at least for a little while. I was thinking, wow, this is like... I'm recording the life and death of a melody. It just made me think of human beings, you know, and how we die. 
You can really hear the disintegration on this particular loop. I think this was number five. It starts sounding like the rest, like this. But after just 15 minutes, it's basically completely gone. And the tape on this one, it, you know, tape is normally brown. Right now, it's, it's clear, like scotch tape. The dust is gone. And there's a little bit of brown here. But now it's just clear. Oh, it's almost all gone. 